We're going to get going right now. Okay, fair enough. Awesome. So welcome, everyone. This is uh, Gigi Inspire. Be inspired today. I've got an incredible guest with us. He's a great friend. And he's a, he's a new friend to me, but he's a, a great friend of some of the people that I've known for a long, long time. His name is Chris Green. And this, let me tell you, this is the, uh, the, the podcast, the stream for entrepreneurs. It's all about the ups and downs of entrepreneurship, the, the wonderful parts, the challenges. And frankly, it's just really for me, it's an F you to everyone who told me not to be getting mm -hmm. into business for myself. Literally, so, literally. Yes. Welcome, my friend. Thank you so much for getting on. Uh, please, you know, say hello to the world. Tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your story. I'm so excited to hear it. Well, first of all, congratulations that you have found a, uh, a way to express yourself and do the things to help people in a, a, a large uh, audience. So if we had maybe 10 of us and then they had 10, imagine how things could be changed because things are going through social media right now. Oh, yeah. And there's so many things coming through social media that uh, are of no positive nature, you know? Um, and actually we're gonna get into that a little bit about the media and how that affects us as a people, as a community. Yeah. But um, I, I, I appreciate you bringing me on here uh, again. Thanks again. I'm Chris Green. Um, uh, there, a lot of people don't know my story, but I was a professional athlete um, with the Pittsburgh Pirates, a left-handed relief pitcher. But there was a classic, classic, classic case of too much, too fast, and not really having the proper guidance of a male uh, in my life. Pure strategic. It was right there. If you look in a book about what and how possibly could a downfall occur, because Gigi, you can have families that had a loving mother and father, three kids. The kids mm -hmm. saw loving, kissing, hugging, doing things, and they turn out to be just ridiculous, upsetting people. Okay. And you can have a situation where it's a mother living in a drug infested neighborhood, uh, having men coming in and out of her home, and that boy and that little girl turn out to be scholars and doctors. Right. So it, it's a variance. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. I, and I say that to say um, in regards to um, people like you and I who are trying to achieve uh, entrepreneurship, there's a there's a few vital things to me. What I've learned in my 30 years, you, of course, you you can read and listen about removing emotions out of the business occasion. You can say, yeah, I'll remove my emotions. Yeah, I understand there's a difference, et cetera, et cetera. But when the situation comes up, your emotion taking them over, taking over before your business logic. OK, and if you don't recognize that and start to harness that part of entrepreneurship, then you're going to be emotional wreck. OK, so absolutely, you know, you're going to you you're going to be an emotional wreck because I know in your business, that you encounter people and I call it um, networking and navigating. Um, you have to do the multiple because you only, only land 4%, but if you're gonna land 4% on a 1% client base, you know, those percentages are not going to work, okay? Mm -hmm. So you have to, to, to hit the multiples by any means necessary. And now with social media available, there's no reason why you can't be successful if, You've done your research. You must have a tangible product. You must have a tangible product, mm -hmm. okay? So if you have a tangible product, you've done your research, then there's no reason why you can't be successful because in that research, you should have hopefully put the um, true possibilities. This is, you say, well, I'm not gonna speak it into existence. Well, you better put it into existence because if it doesn't, you're going to have to do what's your plan B, yeah. okay? So uh, as I was speaking to a friend this morning, um, is that most athletes like myself, we have no consideration of a plan B. Why would we? Right. We're in the prime of our career. Yep. Checks are being deposited. we being elevated emotionally, mentally, and physically by society. So we're being programmed, Okay. Now, again, we don't have a plan B. And as I just spoke about the programming in people and in life, but in for athletes, 
We've been programmed this, hey, way to go, lefty, good job. Yes, way to go. And then all of a sudden there's no sports and nobody giving you that. Right. You can you can zoink out a little bit. Okay. I, I did because after I got out of ball, I'd go into a restaurant or something, and I'm just the normal brother of color. Okay. Yeah. What? yeah. Woo. Yeah. It's yeah, different, okay. right? It had to be a whole adjustment to just a whole new world. <laughs> Yo, okay, so it was an adjustment. And now check this out. You're talking about a logical man of color. Now, if you t I say logical, not, and that's what I'm saying, the only difference between me and yeah. any other man of color is logic. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so if you're not logical, you're listening and being pre-programmed by what the media is doing, and I will give them big ups because they have done a fan fantastic job and not only us is us for us yeah. but strategically in society yeah okay i personally use every what i've learned gg and i'm sure you could relate to this everything that happens to me sourly i go find some sugar and i'm gonna mix it with that because i know my ingredients is sour so i'm going yep. to get some sugar to offset that sour and that sugar is just taking away something that this is not going to happen again. Yep. Not this one. Now there might be another one, but this one is not going to happen again. Okay. Cause it was sour. It had chitlin. It had chitlin taste going down my throat. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. No, so not that. no, 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 no. And, and, and again, well, I want to get back on the business aspect. I really believe the law of giving and receiving. I believe that law. And when I hire employees, I hire them with the impression of training you so you can leave me and go do that. And I got four guys out there that's been over 10 years. Okay. Wow. I do that. I, I, I hire to inspire. Okay. Because that Ooh, gives like me that. juice. Okay. That gives me juice. I mean, yeah. again, that juice offsets anything that may occur. Okay. Maybe something came from the left that I didn't see, like something, a mountain that pat paying it forward that I did for my employees that offsets that, that counteracts that like it tries to come here, but on this side, it's saying no block block. Okay. So it's essential for us as a community and especially as a man of color to start a business. Don't, you can't not say don't do it, but if you do it, do your research. Really look at life realistically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't put any falsies about anything. You know what I mean? And another thing for entrepreneurs, if you go ask us, put all of us in a room and ask us one question that we will do universally is that we pause. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we take that all... moment. <laughs> take that moment, that 30 seconds, right? Or something to make sure you're making a, a sound decision, not an emotional one, right? That's where it comes in. Cause people will say again, as a human society, as an entrepreneurship, emotions are big. They are exist. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, when I was, uh, starting my business going and really researching everything, uh, there was a book I read and it was called the ankle theory. The Let me tell you about this and listen, this is deep Gigi. It was describing how we our thought process happens, how it develops, how it elevates. And the reason why it says build up, you are get a build up. Listen to this, because every thought you have starts at the bottom of your feet. You think that emotion starts from top to down. No, 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 no. It starts from down to up. And then that's how it's called the build up. Wow. The, ankle, the, the ankle theory was a book that said you can't stop that emotion to coming but you can stop it at the ankle. Hmm. You wow. can't stop the emotion from coming. Cannot, not doable. Yeah. But what you can do is how fast do you catch that emotion? Whether it's joy, whether it's pain, whether it's hurt, mm -hmm. stop that joint at the ankle. And I really focus on that because I try yeah. to stop. Does I do all, do I do it all the time? Emphatic, no. Do I do it more so on the regular to lessen my pain? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So again, in stopping what 
the media is doing to us as a people, as a community, as a unit, strategically yeah. manipulating our minds. And they get big ups from me. I don't Yeah, they're doing the a news. great job of it. <laughs> I, 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 big ups. I, I, I mean, I don't like that they're doing it, yeah. but on the business side and understanding how it's about that, my manipulation, they have done a fantastic job. Yeah. Okay, so Absolutely. that's that's what it is, and um, I want to go back to something. Then I'm gonna listen to some questions that I want you to pose to somebody. But when I was discussing with you about paying it forward to employees, not only do I get them, but they create econ uh, uh, economic foundation. Okay, that is now being facilitated, mm -hmm. and they will. I don't even have to discuss it with them. They will hire some people. And in some of those hirings, guess what they're going to do? They're going to hire them and inspire as well. Right. So there I paid it forward. <laughs> that right. pay it forward mentality, though, that's huge because most people, you know, and that's the big, a big shift for me from being an, an employee to being an entrepreneur is that mm -hmm. idea that you have to pay it forward. You have to it give, first. you have to provide that value before anyone's going to be loyal to you as an employee, before they're Absolutely. going to do anything to go to bat for you within your business. No one's going to care about that right there. That right there. Do, you know, listen. I don't have to tell my guys about worth ethic, about cleaning up, about doing yeah. anything because they are doing that job because this boss just said to me that he doesn't expect me to be for him very long, that they have to go get that money. And they see me making money. They know there's possibilities for them to make money. They do the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. But, so, and and, and yeah. that's that dream. That's that dream. You know, people have that, that dream and, uh, of a better life, a better future. Yeah. And that's the biggest reason why I became an entrepreneur. It's not that, you know, I came from medicine, you know, you had a, a, a great background in sports, right? Obviously you could have done lots of other things to dovetail in a different direction. But mm -hmm. what happens is that people want more freedom. They want more yeah. ability to be able to control their, their time, control their money, control some of those things that we don't ever see as employees. And so mm -hmm. I'm, I think it's interesting. And I want to know kind of like, what is maybe the greatest skill or, or lesson that maybe you learned in baseball that you've been able to kind of dovetail into your entrepreneurship world that's mm. been, that's helped you have success. It's awesome. I, again, was a left-handed pitcher, a relief pitcher. Mm -hmm. So I came in the baseball game under pressure at all times. The bases were loaded. The game was tied. Okay. I came in to try to stop the fuel from the other team. Right. Now, hmm. I had maybe a 70% completion success rate. There were times that I thought, and he hit a home run and we lost. Mm -hmm. There was a time where the second baseman got a normal ball, dropped it, and made an error and we lost. So I think the mental resilience mm. that I got because, you know, somebody saying no to me does not, okay, well, shoot, damn it. Whatever. Okay, let me, okay, let me give up the phone. Let me call Mr. Greek, Mr. Smith, Mr. Jones, Mr. Yeah. Okinawa, Mr. Hakakua. Yep. Okay, yep. somebody got a check out there for me. Okay. Yep. Not oh boo hoo dang Mr. Jones didn't get that deal. Oh wow. No, Mr. Jones is not existent. He's up there in my mind, but he's not existent in my mind. Okay. So that it. athletic, the competitiveness of coming in, because each deal I go to, he's the batter, the home run hitter of the of the league. Okay. And he usually hits left-handed pitchers like me, like meat. And he's a man like me. Okay, so let's see what happens, Mr. Jones, Corporate America Hotel. Yeah. Huh. Okay, yeah. let me tell you a funny story, and I I have to share this. Tell me. I call it my um, corporate voice. Uh, it's okay. funny to me if I set a sales call and I go to a job, and I usually set it up with my corporate voice. 
when I get there and I'm sitting in the lobby and the person I'm meeting walks out, they see me sitting there and they look at their watch and say, now I know I have an appointment at this time. <laughs> okay, so they look at me and it's the most inside I don't respond because I know exactly what's yeah. going on. It's yeah. great. Oh, and so then, funny. And then, so when I get them in there and they kind of get over that, I lock in with my eyes. And I think that's another vital thing in business. I don't blink until he walks away to go get his checkbook. Right. I don't blink. I don't. I ain't looking at you all weird. Like, are you going to do it? No. Right. Right. But I'm locking in to you. I'm not blink. Yeah. I don't blink. No blinking. Uh, conscious. My, I'm thinking about sales and don't blink. Sales mm -hmm. and don't blink. And then after he said, oh, yeah, I think we go with you. Then I might have a blinking spell or something to catch up for all the mind. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. That's funny. Mm -hmm. I love it. You know what's funny about that is that I remember growing up, whenever I would I would talk to somebody on the phone, whenever they would see me, they would have that. Hmm. Okay. Moving oh, yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, Moving yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, like, oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. I didn't. Oh. Well, oh. Okay. Got it. Um. All right. I want to do something fun. It's just my little quiz piece. Okay? Absolutely. So, so these are kind of like, it's your this or that, things that you like, this or that, right? Okay, okay. Uh, so transparent, rather, completely yeah. transparent? Okay. Well, please. Of yeah, that'd course. Be good. Oh, All right. So would you rather travel to big city or like beach and tropical? Nowhere. Stay home. Got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you can't pick baseball this one. So is it football or basketball? Which would you football. rather watch? Football. football. Okay. You know why? Why? Because they get to hit each other and not go to jail. <laughs> okay. <laughs> got it. <laughs> I got it. Yeah, there's brawls in basketball that hit each other. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. What about like chill at home or night out? I guess I could pretty much guess that one. Well, I have my home set up. You know, I have a home theater business and, you know, uh, smart home business. Mm -hmm. So I have a... Um, 120 inch projection screen in my back room with severe surround sound. Nice. I have music playing in every room of my house. Okay, I got flat screens all over the place. Uh, Alexa and me are uh, we've we've we we broke all the corporate and she talks to me when I come on. She say you want something on? I don't have to say nothing to her. She asks me, "What do nice. you want me to cut on?" Okay, do you want jazz on when we come in? What do you want? She she asks me now. I don't even have to talk to her. She talks to me it. when I come in. So it. and it's safe here. It's safe. Yeah, one hundred. And me being a former athlete, I traveled all over the world already. Yeah, I've yeah. been everywhere. The only place I haven't been was to Germany. I've been everywhere. I went to Rome, Paris. Japan, the Bahamas, Mexico, Venezuela, Dominican Republic in a younger age. So I really had the opportunity with that. To, I travel. I mean, I'm I don't really need I don't know what it is, but I'm I'm good. I've done all that when I I mean, I understand people and I agree with doing things to make yourself happy. And if that's a go for yeah. it. But I I've done it all. You know yeah. what I mean? I just want to stay safe and energized for the entrepreneur battle Monday through Friday. I got you. I got mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. um, well, here's, here's a question that I think would be, would be helpful for you to, to share with other people. So mm -hmm. what do you think limits people's mindsets? Because we're, we're in a very crazy age right now. Things are shifting. People are leaving their jobs left and right. You know, they're looking for, for new things, but you know, some of them are just looking for the next job, the next, you know, just transfer this responsibility to the boss. And some people are thinking, I think I want to start my own business. I want to find something that makes me happy, something that I can make money at, whatever. But what do you think it maybe limits people's minds about creating a business or going out and becoming an entrepreneur? One, one word. No, two words. Positive support. Mm. If you have been in a mindset of being an employee for a duration of your life to go out there in entrepreneurship it's a it's a really kind of lonely place mm -hmm. okay and when you go out there for this entrepreneurship many people forget that that is a real big component because people are working eight to five you're at home trying to get this thing going 
they may be your friends, but you decided to come out of the stall. Right. I call them stalls. You decided to come out of the stall and now you're out there in the field grazing and, but they're still in the stall looking mm -hmm. back at you. So you're not going to have the support. So that's where it's very vital to understand that in doing your research, not your research, not only on your, on your having a tangible product, but your research emotionally, mentally, and physically. Many people don't do that and it requires everything of you. Okay, not only your intellect, but mentally, emotionally, and physically. Have you done your research and what's necessary to be able to have that? Because it's lonely out here in the entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, okay, so it is. It is. You're, <laughs> it is. Ultimately, you're by yourself. You know, I mean, you may have you may have a team that you're working with. You may have guys and gals and what have you. Like you may have all of that, but ultimately, the buck stops with you. So, as an entrepreneur, if you know the the energy, the drive, the passion you know, the engine really is you. And so you're right. You know, that was one of the biggest challenges that I had in the beginning was, you know, the crab theory, like, well, what do you mean you're trying to get out and do something different? Like you did X, Y, Z, you went to school for medicine. You should, you know, just, just stay safe. It's such a shame that you would consider giving up your career. A shame for who? Who? Not for me. Shame. A shame. I'm ashamed that I've been in this this long. That's what I'm ashamed of. If, if I'm going to be ashamed of anything, it's being in going in this stall. It's let me say this about this. It's really crazy. And I use different. I don't have to use a lot of motivating factors. But when I have a, quite a few jobs going on and sometimes, you know, there might be some outside things going on. I think about, OK, you can go get your key fob if you want to. OK, the key fob yeah. is what corporate America uses to go in the yep. door to go in their stall. I yeah. was like, okay, you can go get a key fob if you want to now. Yes. You get you a key fob or you want to handle this like you can to handle it. Because there is available for the key fob. No key fobs for me. No yep. key fobs for me. I'm sorry. I am not made up that way. But didn't you tell me that you you were you at one point were like, I'm just gonna see if I could if I could do it, if I could go back to to working for someone else, just for a little bit. I did. You know? I did. I did do yeah. that. I did it for I did it for a month and it was for a test. You know, oh, okay. Yeah. My employees, what I was going to do and what was the topper is we were doing a job in Alabama and the supervisor was a, um, the other guy and um, about five foot two. We go into the office of the apartment complex where we were wiring for camera. And he said, how you doing? Miss Wilson? This is my worker, Chris. Yeah, I had to take a minute and go in the hallway, literally. Like I said, is your bathroom, Miss Jones? Is your bathroom over there? Because I walked walk in the hallway and I went out of their view. I stopped there. He just said and introduced me as his worker, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. No. I did that. I did that. And I was like, okay, we had an incentive and a drive. Unfortunately, I left the company hanging. But at that point, I just got in my truck because I drove to Alabama, didn't tell anybody nothing. I just got in my truck and drove back to Charlotte and was in, in, was driven even faster and stronger yeah. and with more diligence. Yeah. 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 But here, yeah. that's what it is, though, is that you have to treat people right. And Re forward. Regardless. And that's and the forward. difference. That's the difference between a boss, a manager and mm -hmm. a leader. Because mm -hmm. you can lead as an entrepreneur, you have that ability to make people feel good and make them want to work hard, or you have that ability to turn it off and go the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And so that's the, the difference is that in a lot of times in corporate America, they're trying to keep you where you are, right? Versus let you grow. Because in corporate America, when you get good, you're going to work past them. Right. They think that you're going to work them right out of their job. And so for me as an entrepreneur, I'm like, be better than me. I would rather have a ton of people that I work with that are a thousand times better than me. Why? Because I let them be free. I let them be themselves. Mm -hmm. I let them get better, you yeah. know, and nobody mm -hmm. I never wanted anybody to put a lid on me. Right. I mean? To put right. a right. limit on what I could do, you know. Right. Right. And I equate that 
And I can re equate that somewhat to relationships and man woman interaction. If you try to harness that female's uh, essence, you're you're hindering yourself. You're taking away from yourself. So if you try to harness them as an employee, if, as an employer in corporate America, I'm harnessing you. So I am not only harnessing you, but you're not going to progress and you're not going to be incentive driven to progress because you have harnessed me. Right. Right. No, you're, held, you're holding me. <laughs> yeah. And I'm no. allowing it and I'm allowing it. Yeah. But I and will I, say, don't be just jumping out there trying to start a business just because you fed up with Supervisor Shaniqua or, or Mr. Mr. Yeah. Lowenstein. Yeah. Okay, no, don't let Shaniqua or Mrs. Lowenstein do that to you because Miss Shaniqua and Mr. Lowenstein will still be paying their bills and you're going to be sitting over there at home, you're bills piling up and now you're stressing about bills instead of putting Mr. Lowenstein and Shaniqua in the right proper mm -hmm. place. <laughs> And that's what I worry about. That's what I worry about the great resignation is that you have that rash move to to leave your job to, to find something. But I saw an article that said a lot of the people that have left their jobs are now wanting them back. It's because they go, oh, wait, I, I really wanted that paycheck. You know, I wasn't quite ready. I didn't have enough emergency fund or any of those things, you know. And so but it's true. You know, you should do your research. You should find something that you like or find people that you like. Or, if, you know, you said something about about mentorship, you know, having, you know, a positive role model, having people that whose life you want. Is there something about their life that if they're in business and they're doing X, Y, Z? Is there something about that, the life that they have that you want? And so I think that that's really huge. But also on a financial aspect, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, people are we're again, we're in a, a super chaotic time in yeah. the country, but. Like financially, because this is something that, that we talked about early on, you mm -hmm. know, what do you think is the, the, the challenge that people have financially? Because yeah, I think they huge. can do a lot That's of things huge. correctly, but then on the financial side, they fall off. Huge. So what it's do you huge. think maybe some there? Well, that's what I was going to get ready to say. I was going to segue into that in regards to what you're doing. I, I believe that, again, being strategically manipulated and not really looking at that aspect, living for the now. Yeah. How could I afford a future when I'm trying to still struggle in the now? How am I going to prepare for the future while I'm still struggling in the now? Mm -hmm. And that's most people's mentality. How could I be thinking about some investments and some, some money markets and some, some health care, life insurance, when I'm still do powers do I'm three hundred, four hundred dollars behind on do power right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can't spend two hundred dollars to try to look for some future right now when I got Duke Power and then the, the boy here, he can't no more happy meals for him. We got to get the freaking adult right. special. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so so yeah. You know, so yep. you know that's that's huge, but people don't know and don't understand that things are doable. That's yeah. what I believe it is. They're so caught up in the now, and most people are behind, unfortunately, and most people are working for America, you know, because corporate America is Burger King too. Yeah. You know what I mean? It it really is. You know what I mean? So, you know, again, being strategically programmed from the mother and the mother and the daddy ain't nobody seen as a child nobody budgeting yeah nobody seen anybody or heard anybody talking about bank accounts nobody told anybody your children about the need to have good credit nobody's telling them this they're not even telling them this no. in high school why are you no. teaching these kids now this is a whole new subject and i'll go get on it because you're gonna yeah. get canceled yeah. <laughs> why are you <laughs> why are you teaching these kids about what happened in 1881 instead of teaching them about what some creditors do, about proper job etiquette, about yeah. uh, uh, morals, about that? Yeah. Why do they need to know that Columbus came in over here and screwed everybody? OK, why? Uh, yes, maybe know about the tribe and your family history. Be why yeah. I need to know about the proclamation, acclamation or whatever this yep. is. Yep. OK, why would well, teach me about. How do I find, do my finances? How do I need, if I prepare now, if I look at and do and follow this for 10 years now, when I get 10 years and I've been following this out of high school, I might be able to go do this. Yes. Nobody's talking to them about that. They're talking yeah. to them about 
uh, bling bling and and Nikes and 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 whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and again, it's all strategically done. And again, I give them big ups. They've done a great job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you're, are, you're yes, so right. They did. They, so I. They have done a fantastic phenomenal yeah. job okay so yeah. but i think it's good with what you do because there are some people that are ready and listening and this pandemic has caused a lot of people to again evaluate things mm -hmm. you know what i mean because now i see what if something happens and i do have to live for six months with no job what what am i going to do where can, what resources do i have i can't go right. to my dad shoot he's on disability yeah. Okay. Yeah. My sister, we ain't spoken 15 years. Mm. Yeah. It's you. It's you. My husband, that's, that's I love it. him, but he's not incentive oriented. He's just yeah. going. He has no aspirations to start a business or truck driving. And he just go where to go get in his truck instead of trying to save and buy his own truck. He don't listen to me when I say, hey, babe, why don't you go do that? Yeah. Yep. Hey, girl, you've been doing all these girls' hair in the house. Why don't you go ahead and get a little booth and go get a little small shop? He's not telling her that. Yeah. Okay, so we're the component, again, to support. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You're right. It's that support. It's that. But it, it's also that, that drive to educate yourself mm -hmm. and just know that you know, nothing that we, nothing that we're proud of, nothing that, of, that we've achieved in our lives has come easy. Uh -huh. Nothing. You know what I mean? You can't think of one thing that you just kind of fell into that was like, oh, that was super comfortable. Like, no problem. And we have to be okay with the hard work mm -hmm. or the time that it takes to learn a craft or get better or excel mm -hmm. at it. You know, these are, you know, or learn your money stuff, like all mm -hmm. of those things. I mean, I got into the money business because I didn't understand these things and I knew I needed to, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but anything that we have to do that we're going to look back and be proud of even raising kids. I mean, I mm -hmm. love my kids to death. They drive mm -hmm. me crazy, but mm -hmm. it's a journey, right? Mm -hmm. And it takes mm -hmm. a lot of work and patience mm -hmm. and time and care. Mm -hmm. Um, Along with your with, husband, along with oh, your yeah. husband, along with oh, your yeah. business, along with your sister, along yeah. with your team, yeah. along with the bills, along with the car, along with the yeah. pooch. Okay, yeah. so how okay, so I got a question for you. If you oh, okay. were to say something to women in general, your your women of color, what would you say to them? This is one of their greatest hindrances that you would say trying to venture into entrepreneurship and preparation for the future financially? Oh, that's a great question. So I would tell you this. I believe that we have a view of the way that we're supposed to be in the world. You know, our, you know, like you talked about media, you know, mm -hmm. what we were raised on or how, how we've been told that we're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we have a lot of these ideals of what our parents told us or our mom told us, what have you. And so we limit ourselves in the ability to break out of those things and do something new and do mm -hmm. something different. And so our belief is that we probably should just do what's safe and probably should do what's, you know, under the grain, stay uh, like low under the radar mm -hmm. and not push too hard. You know, for me, people thought I was crazy when I said, when I, I went to USC, you know, and I decided to leave what I was doing to be a, fi a, a financial advisor, an entrepreneur. Like mm -hmm. they thought I was absolutely nuts. My mom was supportive, but she was more like, you need to get your degree first <laughs> and figure out, you know, and just make sure you have a plan B. Yeah, yeah. Right. Make sure you have a plan B. She was like, I'm supportive, but eh, I don't know. Like, OK. You know, she wasn't negative. And a lot of people, like you said, the positive support, a lot of people don't have that positive support. So it's something that we have to develop in ourselves. So as women of color, we don't have the we don't have those beautiful views of incredible strong women. We have more than we used to. Ooh. We have a lot more than we used to, but we have to be our own advocate. We have to be the person that takes what we know. Okay, that's what that's how it was before. I'm going to flip the script. I'm going to change it. I'm going to do it the way that I want to do it. And I want to be a role model for other people. I want to be somebody that somebody can look at and say, I could do that. Do you know what I mean? 
-hmm. And so for me, I think that the limitation is, is our mindset, what we've been told. And so that's why I felt like I want to put something out that is, is not like anybody else's. And there's a million podcasts out there, but for me, Mm -hmm. I was like, I want to be able to put out something that, that is real. Like when I say yeah. this is an F you to everyone who told me not to yeah, do yeah. that's yeah. how we feel. Literally. For years, for years and years, like people were, so, I mean, I have friends still that were in my wedding that I barely talked to and they're wonderful people, but it's just because they had that same like, oh, that's cute. You're going to go run a business. You're going to do X, Y, Z. You never go out anymore. You know, I mean, I see they take trips all the time and they're having tons of fun. I don't get invites, but I'm like, you know what? In a few years. You're going to be still doing what you're doing and I'm going to be in the Bahamas and I'm going to be over here and I'm going to be there. And my kids are never going to have to worry about college. I mean, all those things like we have to sell ourselves the dream and the crusade of a better life. And so that's what I would say is don't don't hold yourself to the status quo of what you've been told that your life is supposed to be like. Go make it. Go design it. Go find the thing that you're passionate about and don't let anybody tell you to stop. Go as hard as you can on it because that's what you want. The difference is, is that the people who want success in life, they're not going to, they're not going to let go of it. Uh, for me, mm-hmm. I've been in business for 14 years. I'm like a dog with a bone. Like I have people now they are like, oh, it's business is hard. I'm like, yeah, it is hard. And mm-hmm. you know, if you want, if you want the end result, you got to get after it, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So yeah. I guess that it would is. be my message, you know? And that's good. That's a good message because, uh, Woo! Uh, you guys, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Crazy. So, yeah. Wow, wow. But anyway, uh, I love it. I love it's, it. it, it it's Thank good you. because again, it's what you guys have been programmed with. You, you know what I mean? From start, yeah. you know, you might have been programmed to be. Uh, you got to be prissy and etiquette and all that, but not about aggressive in business and career. But yeah. you sure were programmed on how to be pretty and make sure your hair is done and yeah and everything like that because that's what mom always took got up at four o'clock to leave at eight right. to get dressed okay so right. you know how to do that but she didn't take the time to sit down and say darling career darling marriage darling finances right. darling goals she didn't do that like you just said right. and the same applies for the male you know as a son if you were are you telling your son, well, yeah, I'm just going to work and got to drive for Mr. Jones. I'm going over to Chicago. Now I'm getting ready to probably maybe get my own truck and try to do this myself. And your son's right. listening to you do that. Right. You know, right. my my daughter has a exercise company in Ventura. And I know part of it was because her mother had her own business. I had played ball. And then after ball, I started my business. So she's been on that entrepreneur thing for a long time. So yeah. in her, even in her subconscious, you know, mm-hmm. and she did what I did. She went to go work for a company for a little while and reinforced with her. No, no, I'm not going to do this. <laughs> That's not what I want. That's no, not what I want. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, that's good though, but I hope and, and you keep reaching out to people. And again, you want to put out something because this is good because it was a combination of realistic answers applicable to life and business. You know, not just one directional, one directional. And I think it's good. The product I think you're doing is great. And I think people, if they really listen and listen to what you're saying, not just being in the moment, listen. Okay. So I would say people for what you're doing is when, when they do just to listen. And I think far as you, you know, that there are people that you can do a Zoom with and they're, they're in Zimbabwe somewhere, even though y'all on a Zoom meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so but there's some that's going to be locked in and to every question and making notes, et cetera, because they are getting some some uh ohs, you know what I mean? Like and some oh, really, you know, and there are some there are some, you know, so I appreciate what you do. And again, I'm glad. And you are to me. Um, I, I, I saw one of your pod thingies this morning. Um, I hadn't seen one, so just get an idea. Like I told you, how I practice with your Facebook picture, and then with the questions. You know what I mean? So I was, in, I was impressed. Yeah, That's yeah, that, yes, that. yes, yes, yes. So you know, for real. So I, I, I wish you the best on that, and um, yeah, come back, stop by again sometime. Sounds good. Thank you, Chris. That was amazing. I love the conversation. 
so good to hear, you know, kind of the inside and also a lot of what's going on in your head. And you know what, Th this is the time to start taking things to the next level. You know, mm -hmm. we have to do that ourselves and to take personal responsibility for it. So you, you are an incredible example of that dad athlete. Like I put on there, I wanted people to see that you are a visionary because entrepreneurs have to have a vision in order to have some level of success. They're chasing mm -hmm. something. They've got something out there that they mm -hmm. want to be able mm -hmm. to hit. So thank you for sharing that vision and your mindset on entrepreneurship and, and the entire journey that you've come from. And I hope we get a chance to, to chat again. But I have one question. I have yeah. one question for you. I'll take it. Based Let's on go. what you just said, you said you have to have that vision. Do you think in that vision you need to put an equation, a few walls and brick walls, some 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 uh, some chain link fences, um, <laughs> some automatic doors, some uh, metal doors? <laughs> I, so, I, I think I think figuratively you're going to have all of those all the time. All yeah. of them. All you know what? Them. Look, Chris is a Chris is a, a, a smart home creator, smart business creator. He does all of it. Right. Mm -hmm. So. I have I have all those things in my vision. I see, you know, this is right here. This is my this is my dream home. Right? Oh, OK. Yeah. So I, I, I use a couple of different backgrounds. So this is my dream home. And I was mm -hmm. thinking to myself, I was like, I could have Chris like come and take care of the whole thing. Get it like just on like the touch of a button, voice activated, all of it. Right. Right. But you're going to have all of those things along the way. Right. <laughs> I, <laughs> he is. He is somebody who works with all different backgrounds, mm -hmm. all different, all different types of people, all different types of businesses mm -hmm. to essentially expedite everything that they want as mm -hmm. far as their their location. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, yeah. I guess we didn't talk about that. Do you want to just tell everybody that yep. before we sign in, off? In what capacity? What I do uh, exactly? Or what do you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Just tell me. Tell us just about, a little bit about your business and like what you actually do so that when I send this out, you know, let's, let's okay. marketing is always a good thing. That's always a good thing. Well, we didn't go into I know we had the last leg, but we didn't go into that. But what visual concepts came from? It was um, first it, it first started out as um, views unlimited. It was four of us that got together as partners and we all work for another company. And we said, hey, why don't we do our own thing? And we did. It was four of us, but everybody except me wanted to be the chief and nobody wanted to be the Indians. <laughs> OK, so I wouldn't care about no chief. I just yes. want to be able to make some money. OK, so that didn't work out. And then after that didn't work out, I got the fever. OK, I got the fever and then it, it, it kind of dissipated that. And then I said, you yeah. know what? I, I I think I can do this. I can do so, this. yeah, I said, this yeah. is, just takes a little bit of what I got already in me. Um, I said, I, my baseball career was uh, short. And so I got all this excess athletic energy going on yeah. that I can utilize. And then Karam's visual concept, and that was 30 years ago. Um, yes. We started out wow. doing security cameras for big hotel chains, Hilton's. Uh, Holiday Inns, Ramadas, uh, Clarions, and then that segued into putting audio systems in for hotels, the music, and that segued into doing internet wiring for businesses, and that segued into doing the automatic doors that you might see at a 7-Eleven that they lock it automatically. So mm -hmm. when I come in, I'm listening to what the client has and telling me what their concerns are and what they would like to be able to achieve with my services. Then I give them the realistic things about it if they want to do this. Um, it's gonna cost you a little bit, okay? Um, I have different levels. I didn't used to do different levels. It was one price. So when I submit a price, I submit a price of two levels. This is A, this is B. Mm -hmm. If you go with A, guess what you're gonna get, A. If you go with B, you're going to get B, okay? But I want to give you an example. Well, how am I to know what's the difference between A and B that you're telling me? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, Mr. Jones, uh, I'm sitting in your office because the other general manager over at the Hilton next to you called and told you that um, I was the person that you needed. Right. I said, so I won't go any further than that because I'm not going to really go and explain to you the equipment. I'm going to go on what is obvious your gen other general manager sent me yeah. to you he sent yeah. me to you for a reason okay so i'm not going to elaborate on a and b 
I'm just going to tell you that A is A and B is B. So we developed that, and uh, I go in and do home smart homes. We get people that build homes, and they hear all this stuff. So I'll come in, and and I say, what do you want? I want my house to do this, this, and this. Oh, do you? Well, you forgot. It can do this, this, and this, too, because you always upsell. Mm -hmm. Okay? And like I said, even in homeowners, I don't blink. Okay? And I always stand on the side with the male. I'm on the left side of the husband and then his wife. Not in between them, not on her side. On mm -hmm. his side, okay. So you know, and then I develop in what they want. If it was my house, I say, Mister Jones, I hear what you're saying. But if it was my house, this is how I would do it, and this would be a, a lot easier and user friendly, and you would have less problems of of uh, things exposing the system. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Then I blink yeah. and write the invoice. <laughs> <laughs> okay so i love it yeah love so it. yeah so it, it's, it's good for me and again i use every I'm, i've played in front of 30 40 000 people okay yeah. so just because you're the ceo and you're worth 50 million no matter to me more power to you righteous right on yeah. but this guy right here is played in the major leagues under undue pressure and been around millionaires too yeah yeah. So I'm not phased by you. And I think a lot of them see that I'm not intimidated. Okay. And, uh, and hmm. they like that. I think they like yeah, that. Exactly. Exactly. Hmm. Yeah. This might be the guy I want for my job because he's not all, he's, his nose is not all up in my butt. Okay. He's just telling me realistically what he yeah. wants and what he can do for me. Yeah. Okay. With ease and comfort. Yeah. And again, I don't blink. Gee, I don't blink. I'm serious. The two you things I think that. about when I'm in a sales call, don't blink and get that check. Once I get the check, then I said, I might look away if the clients are looking and do a multi-blink thing to get it in from not blinking for so long. But then, <laughs> I'm <good. laughs> then I'm good. I'm good after that. So that's what we do. I love it. We stay busy. I haven't put an ad in the paper ever in 30 years. I keep four the guys. Power of the referral. Yes. 30 years. I mean, I've had people say, well, you know, why don't you do things different? Well, you know, elevate your business. With No, because advertisement, they don't know me from Joe Blow. OK, yeah. when I get referred, all I got to do is negotiate the price. Right. OK. And I, I have a closing rate of 95 percent, Gigi. Nice. That's pretty okay. impressive. Yeah, because uh, I get in front of you. Remember, I don't do advertising. So yeah, I don't get in front of too many people all the time. I mean, on a regular I do, but not 20, 30 per week, yeah. you know, maybe four per week. So out of those four, I need three. OK, and I do whatever I need to do within reason to keep my guys fed. OK, wow. yeah, I do. I you sometimes it great and sometimes and they know that, too. Hey, look, guys, we got to do this job like this because, you know, hey. This is what it was going to be. And we got to do it this way. So it's not going to be that this week. It's going to be this this week. But I tell you what, why don't you go run service? Because we have service calls that we have that we don't do because we're doing job. Tell you what, why don't you go run service this week? OK, mm -hmm. so you're making one hundred and twenty five dollars times two hours times five service calls. OK, because we took yeah. one job. You OK, so you go do the service calls. This eight, you go do this eight, you go do that one. So it always do, and they do, and they're welcome with that because again, if they may say, "Look, uh, buddy, buddy, blah, no problem." What? Okay, you gonna pay my money back, but I got you. I, you know, I got you. But look, if you do it one time, yeah, I'm not gonna be upset with you, and I'm still yeah. gonna work with you, and we still gonna be positive. But you won't get me to help you, not like that anymore. Yeah. Okay. So, and not many bosses do that, but I know again. I don't have to worry about how they're doing their job. I know they're not going to shortcut. I know they know when Mr. Jones, corporate America is on the backside of the hotel and I'm in the front that if you encounter him, you know how to conduct yourself. Right. Right. OK, because, again, they know that everything is a referral, not only our job, but our interaction with them. A thousand okay? percent. Yeah, a thousand absolutely. percent. Absolutely. And that's a huge part of business right there is the, mm -hmm. the referral and the relationships and, doing and professionalism right. and professionalism. Know, executing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Professionalism, executing. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many things that go into business. And so we just highlighted a few. But 
you know, I appreciate you so much. And this is, it's really good to hear, you know, your journey and, and, and everything that you've been able to achieve, but also mm -hmm. even the day to day, like mm -hmm. how to maintain professionalism, how to execute, like the things that you, you know, the, those things that you, that you don't have to remind people of, but you do because you mm -hmm. have a lot of people in business that don't do that, you know, no, so, and they don't stay, they don't no, stay they in don't business stay. long term. No, 30 years speaks for itself. 30 yeah. years, not one yeah. ad ever, not one ad, Gigi, wow. ever, ever, wow. ever, not even in the, not, not even in the uh, uh, Country Farms Journal. I ain't even putting any <laughs> of that one, you know? <laughs> no. I love it. I love it. Well, um, I know I, I, I promised you 30 minutes and I know we did way more, but you just had so many great things to say. So right. I appreciate you. And I, I think that I've learned a lot today, even just about what your experience, but I know this is going to be of huge value for other people. And I hope, look, if you're in, look, I know that you don't, you're not just in, uh, in Charlotte. So no. obviously you go all over. So if you're looking for someone to create smart home, smart hotel, any of those things, you feel free. Obviously you're going to get incredible quality and professionalism with this man. So we appreciate you, Chris. Um, thank you. Everybody thank out you very there. Much. Thank you very much. Mucho gracias para tu tiempo. <laughs> You're wonderful. I did four years of Spanish and I don't speak it. Oh, wow. It's it's terrible. Actually, I think I took four years. I think I took, no, three years in high school. And then I took medical Spanish for four years while I was in school. Oh, wow. But, but when I do speak it, I'm pretty good. So I can get, I can get back in it quick. So. Right, right. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll try. Okay. Because I'm sure you, I'm sure that kind of puzzles your other Spanish people out. I, we know you Spanish because we got that blood. I know you Spanish. So I'm talking to you. <laughs> you looking at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> People, you know what? When I do speak Spanish, people don't know what to do with me. They're like, "I don't. Are you Honduran? You Puerto Rican? Like, because my accent's pretty good, right? Right, right, pretty right, good, right, but right. okay. They don't know right. now. Anyway, all right, everybody, be inspired. Thank you very much. Have a great life. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Chris. Have a fantastic, fantastic day.